What is up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. In this video I want to show you a little trick or tip for adding effects to samples and being able to manipulate samples that are coming into the unit. This is kind of like a beginner tip and if you're familiar with the SX you probably already know about doing this and the benefits of doing it. And just quickly before I start I've got 15% off all my drums at the moment until Sunday. The date today is the 7th of May 2021 just in case you're watching this in the future. So up until Sunday this week I've got 15% off all my drums in my store. So yeah head to spvids.com and pick those up if you can. It helps support what I do and it keeps me going and sharing these tips with you guys. So yeah definitely worthwhile for everyone involved. And huge thanks to everyone that's picked them up over the last couple of days. It really does mean a lot, guys, to see the support coming in. So thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying those kits. So let's get on with the video. We know the SX is a formidable unit when it comes to effects. We've got the 24 effects down here. We've got the five additional effects up at the top here as well. We've also got the toggleable lo-fi setting. It's just a really, really good effects unit. And I've spoken about that in a lot of detail over various videos on my channel. But one way we can take advantage of this massively is to use it when we're actually recording a signal into the box. Now there's a couple of things you need to do to set this up. So you may not be aware of this if you've just picked the unit up. So I'm gonna go through how you do it. And it's very straightforward, but it can catch you out. It used to catch me out back when I first got this unit as well. So what I'm gonna do is get a signal coming into this unit. And to do that, I'm just recording straight from my laptop into the back. And what you can do is you can apply an effect whilst you're recording in. So if I've got record set and I press the effects, as you can see there, it's chosen FX16, MFX16, which is vinyl sim. That's a very popular one that we use on the SX to get that wobble in the samples, which is very characteristic of lo-fi music. So I wanna get some MFX16 on this jazzy sample that I've got lined up here. Now I've got that all ready, but the thing that you have to know is that when you hit record, the right hand dial always becomes a level. So as you can see here, it affects the level that you're sampling in at. So what happens if you want to change the wobble on the recording that you're doing? You can't do that because when you're holding record, it's set to the level. So you have to come out of it, have the sample coming into the unit using an external source and so make sure external source is pressed. And as you can see there now, it's back to Flutter, uh, FLU. And basically what you have to do is set those settings before you hit record. So I want the Flutter to be on full, so I'm gonna crank that all the way to full. Then I'm gonna hit record and apply the MFX to the signal. And this will now control the level again, but we know that it's gonna be on full Flutter. So I'm gonna record something in just quickly. Okay, I can't do too much because of copyright and YouTube, so. There we go, we've got the sample in there and it's got the effect applied. And what this also means as well, it saves a step with resampling when you're adding that to the signal on the way in. So if you were just sampling in vanilla, you would then have to resample that at least once to get an effect on it. This means that you don't have to do that. So that's one advantage with this. It saves a lot of time if you're someone that loves stacking up the, uh, the effects on the SX. And obviously we all love doing that and getting those unique sounds out of this box. So it saves a lot of time doing that. And another thing as well, obviously, is that it lets you manipulate the sound a lot when it's coming into the unit. So we've sampled that in. Now I'm gonna try the same sample again, but I'll use some compression and the difference should be pretty noticeable. So again, we need to set the parameters before we hit record, especially the right hand one. We can still mess around with these, but not the right hand one. So I'm gonna have this pretty high. I'm gonna record this in. So I'll hit record. The MFX isn't lit, so I'll make sure that's lit. We can hear the hum now, so that's definitely working. Choosing to record. <laughs> take that off now so we haven't got that hum and you can hear the difference between these two so that's a huge difference in sound it's still the same signal but we've just applied effects from the unit and we're we're making a massive difference to that signal that's coming in so as you can hear with this one there's a lot more bass in it I'll just turn it down a touch way more bassy because the compressor is pulling everything together, it's pulling all the levels together. So the whole frequency range is getting compressed quite literally and everything's being brought up to the same level. So we're getting a much thicker sound than we did with the MFX16, which sounds something like this. So yeah, with the MFX16, we've got a much more muffled and kind of lo-fi sound to it, which is great, but that's not necessarily always what you want. 
Another good example for this would be the C canceller, which is 22. So I'm just going to apply this. And what this does is it takes the base out, or you can take the high out as well, look. So I'm going to use this to take the base out, drop that, have the high, I assume keep that at 12 o'clock, uh, left or right. We're going to keep that in the middle as well. So that's all set up. So let's hit record and we have to press it again. And let's record in some more of this sample. Okay, so we've recorded another little bit of sampling there. With this effect, we're losing a lot of volume because it's taking out a lot of bass, which makes up the volume of this sample by the sounds of it. But compare that to what we got with the compressor. So the C cancel is especially useful if you want to go ahead and add some bass over the top or some sub over your beat and you don't want the bass from the original sample. If you want to do your own bass work, C canceller is going to be really handy for that. So I hope this little tip was helpful, especially for you beginners out there. Like I mentioned before, don't forget about the sale on my drum packs, 15% off. Use Gimme15 at the checkout and that should get you 15% off. Also, members, thank you very much for the support. If you would like to become a member of this channel, it's a small monthly fee and you get extra perks such as samples and a monthly video, kind of like a behind the scenes of everything that I'm doing with my channel and my music as well. So thanks very much for watching guys, I hope this helps. Leave any comments below if you've got any questions or if you've got any more tips then please feel free to leave those as well. But apart from that, thanks for watching, keep making beats and I'll be back again very soon. Peace!